Haven't we moved on from thinking that other species are here to serve us? We don't need to eat flesh. In fact, it's better if we don't because flesh is it's the temple of somebody else's soul and I don't think that we have the right to take that temple away just so that we can gorge because really that's all it is I mean we can survive we're omnivores we can survive on plants in fact we survive even better and it also helps us to be more compassionate the Eastern religions all suggest a vegetarian diet so that they can be more compassionate and really today we need to be more compassionate we're talking about new paradigms we're talking about new ways of being in the world we're talking about animals being our equals so if they're our equals which they are and speaking as a, a telepath who's been communicating with these beings, not only this life, but last life as well, and maybe a few others. I can tell you, these beings are special. And really to kill them in fear just shows how backward we are. You know, we have to start looking at life in a, in a different way. We have to all become a bit more animal centric if we are to evolve as a species. We need to evolve. We need to grow up. We need to listen to that, that idea that says, thou shalt not kill and do no harm. Harm ye none. We've all heard those. And yet we continually do that. We do that over and over and over again. So really what I want people to understand is that these beings are sentient. And let me tell you the story of Connor. Connor was a steer. And one of my graduates of my school, Rainbow Fienna, was called out. She's an equine masseuse. And she was called out to massage the legs of this steer who'd been down in a ditch. His mother stood over him, vigil, stood there. He'd been down for a week. She hadn't moved. She wasn't going to leave him. She wasn't going to leave him. She was very, very distressed. My student, being a sensitive, could feel all her distress. And she said to Connor, and she named him Connor because she thought if she named him and gave the farmer a name, he might get a chance at a different kind of life. Connor said to her, why should I get up when I'm just going to be killed? And she said, well, maybe I can talk to the farmer. My experience is that animals often know their future. They know what's going to happen to them. Connor chose to lie there and die. His mother stayed there watching over him for a long, long time. Let me tell you the story about Finn. I was introduced to Finn when I was invited as a filmmaker to come and film uh, some wild horses who were being trapped and they were going to be naturally trained. And I was out there with my camera and Finn looked at me very frightened and said, I don't want to be dog meat. Now, people who may not be familiar with telepathy, I have to tell you that when animals see me, they see light. They know that I communicate. They know who I am. So these kind of experiences happen all the time to me. They'll reach out. They'll go, oh my God, you hear us. Thank you. So they, they were, how did he know he was going to be dog meat? He's a small stallion. He's small, very small, and he's fear aggressive. He was terrified. There was no, you know, I don't know how many people are into natural horsemanship and you might know about join up. Well, there was no join up with him. No way. He was terrified. In fact, when they put too much pressure on him, these natural trainers, he turned on them. 
And, and I could feel all his terror at being in a round yard. And I said to them, guys, I'll take him. I'll take him. In fact, I'll take all these horses. There was quite a few of them. They're not going to make good children's ponies. They don't want to be. They're wild. How did he know that he was going to be dog meat? Because horses in this country, that's their destiny. To go to a slaughterhouse and killed in a very horrible manner. But he knew that he was not going to make a good children's pony. He was not going to go to pony club and be controlled and have kids pulling in his mouth and, you know, kicking him in the guts and do all that sort of stuff. He was just not going to deal with that very well at all. So they all left and we got him onto a big float with some hay. And I kept saying to him, you're going to be all right. We're going to take you home. He was never aggressive to me. I was in the same, I, was, I rode in the back with him. Wild horse, aggressive, terrified. Not with me. And when we got home, he came through the gate and he knew he was home. And I kept making him promises. I kept saying, it's going to be okay. We're going to get the rest of them very soon. And finally, all his herd came. There was a tremendous reunion. It was moving. And now he lives, running free. There's 11 of them, and they're very happy. But if a, an animal in the wild can know, because they're telepathic, what their result is going to be in life, thanks to humans, what does that say about us?